Working on a railroad for a dollar a day. Working on a railroad for a dollar a day. Working on a railroad for a dollar a day. Gotta get my money. Gotta get my pay. You found your new calling in life, Dola. Hell no. Hell yeah, cleaning my trucks every day. Who's the one with the hose there? Don't do it. Okay, I'm gonna make you some venison salad. I've been aging this venison for about six weeks, I think now, and you can see it's just delicious. Like, just really gonna be so tender. These guys have the most purest duck fat rendered down I've ever used. I've heated up the skillet. I'm gonna put a big dob in there to do my venison. And come on, you come, mate. Play the game. It's gonna be just the bee's knees for doing my venison in. My mate Tony over in Tarkaka grew this garlic and it's absolutely delicious. I've salted the venison. Pink Himalayan salt. Let it sit for a while just to get to room temperature. This beautiful garlic is going to really add flavour. And it's going to be nice to eat afterwards. Looking a lot cleaner. Looks good, sweetheart. Yeah. yeah. Going well, really well. I'm so hungry now. I'm cooking you some nice venison. Holy crap, look at my herb garden. Not enough water, eh? Oh, a bit of time there still. I'll take that. It's still alive. Might just put some water in there and feed it. I'll get Dayla to. Hey, Dayla, yeah. can you please put a bucket of water in the uh, herb garden here on the trailer? Yeah. Thank you, sweetheart. This is our uh, time. Looks like hedge clippings going into the mix. Uh, certainly going to add flavour to everything, that's for sure. I already started drinking it, so it's not pretty anymore. How's it taste? Like? That's the question. Mm. Really, honestly, don't make it up just because you oh, made it. So good. No, honestly? I don't like the coffee beans. Oh, really? They're oh, Jeds. You don't like kid Jeds. Okay, so what do you like? Sublime. Yeah, I like Sublime too. We tried to get it yesterday in the supermarket, but they had none. And Kush. Okay, yeah. And you, from the supermarket, you can get the. Um, I don't know, but this is... Uh, it, no, it's some like organic stuff and yeah, it's really right. um, it's in a golden packet, it's really good. This is the one that we've got here, I actually like it. It's the strongest, it's a five. Now venison's cooked, it's just resting in the pan, I'm going to take it out and rest it on the rack. Oh, funny. Venison. How'd you rate it? I'm so good. <laughs> You've got avocado on your bed. I've got avocado on my bed? You said no eating for the meal. Oh, you got to taste when you're cooking. Can you please take... You don't cook avocado. Can you please remove that from no. my bed? No. Please? No. Do I have avocado on my bed? No. It's right there. Oh, jeez. It's disgusting, isn't it? Isn't it disgusting? Oh, no, it's just mushed in it. Yeah, it's mushy, yeah. It's because of grease. Because yeah. of green grease avocado. in your face. Avocado. Bro, get the avocado out of your brother's beard. Come on, take it out. You've mushed it in now, you're never going to get out. You might have yeah, to suck it. Gone. You have to suck it to get it out. <laughs> <laughs> so the dressing is olive oil and apple cider vinegar and some chilli that's cracked, just a little bit. Some cream. Cream? Yeah, some bit of cream, yep. And what else is in there? Lemon, one whole lemon. Um, oh, Taylor, your plate's got a lot of... Uh, we need to get another plate for you, sweetheart. Oh no, I like that one down there, it's quite... This plate here? Oh, this one here, the middle one? I quite like, like the, the look plate. of that, oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Actually, no, I can just eat out of the salad bowl. No, yeah, no, that's what my brother does. Bro, you want to grab a plate for Dada, please, bro. Is it right? Go grab a plate for Dada. Yeah. One plate. Uh, put it out there, put it out there, use the channel. Far away, hun. Put as much meat on as you want. Okay. So, if anybody lives in Greymouth or on the West Coast, who goes pig hunting and um, wants to bring me some pork next year? That would be amazing. What about venison? I mean, that would be even more amazing. Well, there's probably more deer on the west coast. But now you're going to have every bloke that's wanting to come and see you do this. You know that, don't you? You put it out there, honey. 
Oh, just this for, this for the me. Yeah. Actually, no, that sounds really bad. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, just for the medicine. Okay, so. Just drop it at my doorstep, that's mm -hmm. all. You enjoying that? Mm -hmm. Hold on, what's going on here? I'm going to make because I'm a hypocrite. Well, that. I am a hypocrite, it's official. That just. You were supposed to just have a salad. No, no, because I'm a hypocrite. And I'm also a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, he's on the garlic roll and some of that too, you know. You're taking the whole lot off the plate. What are you doing, man? There you go. I'm good. Who's well, how much garlic have you left for me? I don't one, one piece. Mm. I've got, no, I've piece. got like three. Another piece. There you go, bro. Oh, man. Can't believe you're eating meat, bro. Oh well. Your body will love you for it. Your emotions may not, but your body will love you for it. How's the salad? It's good, eh? <laughs> Why are you a hypocrite? Because he said he's going to be a vegetarian, and as soon as I put meat on the table, he can't resist it. Oh. And you know why he can't resist it? Because it's so young. Fucking good. Oh, man. How is that meat? You tried it? Yeah, it's good, eh? Just good. Bro. Good and good. It's unbelievable. It's perfect. Mm. Rate my salad. Is it right? Because you're a salad queen. I don't know how I feel about the cream with it. Ah, uh, yeah, right. It's weird with the broccoli, you know? Mmm. Oh, well. But it's yum. Just uh, got the camera on. Just getting this now. You got enough meat now, bro? Second no, it's helping. not meat. It's tofu. Tofu? Yes, yeah, tofu. It's not meat. Let's have a look at this tofu you've got in your plate there. It looks just like meat, but it's actually tofu. Yeah. You fool how yourself. How clever is that? That's, that's how clever how meat looking you can make it look. I don't eat meat because this. That is the same deer that I showed you the video of it getting its throat cut where you got no, upset no. and now you're eating it. No, that's no, it's, it's a little bit like this thing here. Pretty much, uh, except it's a deer, not a. To, and your body wants it, see? And you're going to become a vegetarian? It's tofu. No, I love tofu. This is mm. so yummy. It looks like meat, isn't it? It's very similar looking. It's very similar good. tasting, but it's definitely not meat. My bed of tofu has a tendon in it. That would make me a complete other hypocrite. Was it honey? My bed of tofu has a tendon in it. I don't believe it. You've got third helpings now of meat, bro. It's not meat, bro. It looks a lot like meat. It tastes a lot like meat. That's not going to work anymore, it man. It smells like meat. It's the third it's... lot of meat you've had. For a guy who's going to be a vegetarian, I don't think Harold's impressed. What do you think, Harold? As usual, no comment. Okay, well, chill away, bro. You never know when you're not eating something in the place, so you got to do it. That's the uh, fourth lot of meat. Do you like the gravy? Yeah. That should last me until tomorrow. Enjoy it. That's what I'm eating a lot. I'll feed you tonight. Because look at you, you're starving. Huh. I mean, you're a... Uh... <laughs> Oh, the whole nest is falling out. Yeah. That's that one we had last night. Yeah. Looks like the babies were in there and the... Yeah. Oh, well, that's what happens when you get a storm, bro. It's, it's nature. I think you can't beat the crunchy fat on the mutton, eh, when you cook it. Like, you get that really crunchy yeah, yeah, flavour. So, Tristan's been with me uh, four days and he's been quite challenged being with me, but he's <laughs> really stepped up and I'm really proud of him because he's overcome quite a lot of his fears and he's changed his diet because he's overweight and his health hasn't been fantastic and I haven't even started to work on his real physical yet but one thing at a time I wasn't going to butcher this one but uh, as you can see they're getting hot ah. and they need to be shorn so yeah, yeah. we're going to kill that one on the far one there and uh, we're going to hang it up and skin it and hang up the cooler and I'll, I'll let it hang for a day or two before I feed you before you go back but that'll be what we'll do today we'll kill that but you won't have to kill it because you don't like killing stuff I don't like kill anything, bro what's quite a possibility of stuff eating meat now yeah, bro. Yeah. could you live in the country here bro 
Would you like it out yeah, here? Yeah, I can live. I can live out here, but the whole, the whole killing thing, you know, which is um, what you do, clean sheep and uh, whatever, it's not really my thing. If I show up the sheep, get killed, I get quite emotional. Actually. Whistling with your tongue is not that easy to explain, but I'm going to show you anyway. I have learnt to do it because I like to have my hands free when I'm hunting. I'm carrying a rifle, I'm carrying a camera, or a dog on a lead. I haven't got a spare set of fingers free to put my mouth, which is the other way to whistle, which is probably as loud, although I think I can get slightly louder with the tongue. And I can control it pretty well. Anyway, first thing first, point your chin. So it's like that there. Point it. So you're pointing it out. Now poke your tongue out and curve it so it's that way. So you've got kind of like a C and you're going to curve it underneath your two front teeth. Poke your tongue out, you're curling up. There you go. So it's like that there. And then make a gap underneath it so there's air going between your teeth and your tongue, keeping your chin pointed. <laughs> <laughs> Try it again. <laughs> You've got to have air going underneath yeah, your top teeth and above your tongue. <laughs> and bring your tongue so it's just resting on your bottom lip as you do that, same time. Like that. <laughs> Fail. Keep Fail. practicing, you'll get it. Yeah. Just the first thing to do is to get a little bit of air, just a little bit of like this. Later on you can do all the whistles. <laughs> I'm more of a blow hard than you bro, so don't yeah, worry yeah, about it. <laughs> Thanks. Anyway, yeah, that's how you whistle with your tongue. My brother Tristan has been with me now for eight days. And how's it been, bro? And be honest about this. Um, it's been a combination of shit and really, really good. Only way I can, only way I can describe it, but um, I have lost 3.6 kg in the time I've been here. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. That my jeans are swimming on me. You were 90 when you came. Now you're 85. Point... 85.4. Okay, so talk about first what was shit being with me. Um, just. Uh, going rock fishing and trying to scramble back up the bank when I hadn't eaten for 28 hours and uh, mentally I was not I was a bit, a bit sort of in a strange place the blood sugar and that sort of stuff so that was pretty challenging okay well, it's, it's, it's really been the only thing that's been crap well yesterday you told me you were going to throw up on the hill yeah that was a bit weird yeah, so you strange. struggled there that, that, yeah that wasn't crap that was just feeling sick for a few minutes yeah so uh, Tristan was actually very brave uh, because he allowed me to film him at his worst moment. And I've got a few comments, oh your brother soft and all that. Yeah well, we've all got our, our comfort zone and if you were to be putting my brother's uh, comfort zone up on a stage in front of hundreds of people, he's a musician, and you had to uh, suddenly face a whole lot of people, you might find that uncomfortable. And I've got my places that I'm uncomfortable too, we all do. So the only difference is that he was brave enough to let me film him at his lowest point and put it for the whole world to see because he doesn't really care two fucks, which a lot of people would. A lot of people, public humiliation really it gets a lot of people. So in that sense there, I think he's brave. You keep on looking at your weight and going, geez, I've lost this, I've lost that every morning. He says it's getting lighter. But that actually has got nothing to do with the real issue here. The real issue is your clarity of mind is better. Yeah. Way better. Yeah. Your mood is better this morning. You were whistling yeah. in the shower and all chirpy. Every other morning, it's like you were going to die. Um, that's not that's that's not an understatement. Every morning, you get up and I hear, oh fuck, and then you're moving around. You don't realise how much you've transformed in this week. That's also to do with the exercise you had yesterday. Now you've got the endorphins going. He has been more positive in the last two days. He has stopped complaining about being hungry all the time like he was before. You'd think he had his throat cut. He'd have a, a big large meal and 12 hours later he's like, I'm hungry, man, I'm hungry. You know? And of course, he's not hungry. Well, the hormone ghrelin, which makes you think you're hungry, was making you think you're hungry, but you've still got fat to burn. And you're now on a journey of being on a ketogenic diet. So now he's, he's actually transformed much faster than I expected. To go into a state of ketosis took me a lot longer than it took my bro. On the day six, he stopped being hungry and started tapping into his own fat for fuel. So he's already started to teach his body, the machine of his body, to 
to utilize fat to burn rather than sugar and carbohydrate. So the next two or three weeks will be interesting for him. He will lose a lot more weight, but he'll also gain some muscle. Because what happens with, with ketogenic diet is you, you lose the weight as you use it for fuel to burn, but it also creates lean muscle. Not big bulky muscle, lean, strong, usable muscle. So long as you're doing the exercise, which is your next step, mm. because you need to start doing that. Yesterday, the walk up the hill was a testament to, you need to get bloody fit, mate. You're shocking. Your fitness is just shocking. Honestly, I, I'm serious. There's, there's people that are in their 90s that have got way more fitness than you. You know, you've got to work on that. That's your next thing. I was going to kill a sheep with him while I was here, because we need the meat, because the hunting's been crap, as has the fishing. But we didn't kill the sheep, because he said he would get emotionally upset. I don't understand that. It's things about us that are so different. I don't understand how someone can get emotionally upset about a sheep getting dying. But that's where we're different. Some people said that we're similar, eh? Yep. Well, we probably are, but neither of us can see it. Yeah. And uh, I'd feel sorry for my brother if he had to accept that he was like me. <laughs> <laughs> it's chunky. That's what I feed my dogs here. I feed them that and I feed them posse yum. Post had her guts full of these pups. She's had enough. Yeah, she's like this off. She's in good condition. Her coat's really good. Good girl, Poe. Good dogs. Eat up. Wow. Okay, you can cut pose on it, mate. Good dogs, eh? Stick it in there, bro, and, in, and close it, the door. That's the one. Good man. There you go, boy. We're just going to let him eat it in here because the puppies are out there, and if we feed them with the puppies, we could have an accident. Dogs and food don't mix. Now, if you've got a dog that's a real fast eater, like a Labrador or something, and chop the old chunky up because they'll choke on it. They can choke on it. Bruno's got such a big bite, he's never choked on it yet. And uh, that was only a small piece. So if I was giving him a whole dog roll, which I do sometimes, then I'll probably chop it up. We're up by the Richmond Hills. I'm dropping him off in the airport in an hour. And he's going to have a final walk with me. Yesterday he nearly puked when he was walking. <laughs> Hopefully today it's better. He is now how much lighter? 3.6 kg. 3.6 kg lighter. That's correct. I am. Making me 75.6, I think. Yeah. Cool. 85.6. Who am I dreaming? Anyway, I got a song. Really? Well, not really. It's the thing I made up. It's pretty dumb, but I'm sure people will enjoy it. <laughs> Goes like this. I'm not such a fat bastard <laughs> as I was. I'm not such a fat bastard as I was. 3.6 kg, it just fell off me. I'm not such a fat bastard as I was. Da 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 da. <laughs> Come on, let's get for a walk. Yeah. That really sucked, that song. It's kind of out of it because we used to live in Richmond uh, down there, George Street, and we're not far from it. Yeah, anyway, right. we're going on a mission. You got your water so you can't oh, yeah. get dehydrated. This is where Fatty and Skinny start their mission. Jesus, bro, you're being mean to both of us, you prick. Sorry. Ah, all good. Just uh, let me know if you think you're going to have a heart attack and I'll slow down. But don't choose to stop in the sunny spot if you get yeah. stuffed. Find a bit of shade. You know, if I find it. myself dead, I'll let you know. Alright? You'll be sweet ass, bro. You're carrying 3.6 kg less now, you see? So it's already easier. Hey, look at the hut up there. How cool is that? Let's check it out. Check this out. I know. How cool is that? Hey bro, sit in the hut. Come on. We're going to throw stones at me, are you? No, no. Come up here and sit in the hut, man. Another fucking slippery slope. Jesus, I thought I'd done enough of these. Lucky thing I've got my Geox on, eh? Yeah. See? Sit in the hut. I'll take a photo. Be like a thumbnail. My primitive brother. That's a cool hut. And uh, if you watch the channel and you made this hut, well done, that's awesome. Sorry bro, but you can't eat those. No. These are the uh, banana passion fruit. 
Yeah. But Amazing. currently on your diet, there's too much sugar on them. There's probably a yellow one up there somewhere if you look further up. Bloody well. Remember Love we see those when we were kids in Wainui with them. the Robertsons? You should love them. Can't have them, bro, because you're on a keto diet. He's not such a fat bastard as he was. He's not such a fat bastard as he was. He lost 3.6 kg, but he's still fatter than me. He's not such a fat bastard as he was. Up, oh, we got more stairs, my bro, up here. A whole lot more stairs. He's lucky. It's not a mountain. He can slip through the stairs. How's your heart rate? Let me check it. Jesus, bro. Look at it started. This is just so different to yesterday's walk. Yesterday, he was like, I'm going to be sick, bro. I'm going to be sick. And the reason is he's now in ketosis. What does that mean exactly? It means that you are now using the fat on your body as a fuel. Before you couldn't do it, before your body couldn't use it, couldn't burn it, because you were constantly eating sugar and carbohydrate. Now he's becoming a powerhouse, and because he's got lots of fuel to burn, he's not getting in depletion or getting hungry or getting sick. Or He's gone through the adapting stage, which is actually quite fast, bro. I'm impressed. How are you feeling now? Good. Yeah, I mean, you, yesterday walking this high, you'd be starting to... Beautiful view, look at that. It's a beautiful view. So yesterday you would have uh, really been suffering in this part here. We'll go up here. I've actually been hunting up here years ago. So that's good, eh? Yep. That's really good. He's not uh, not struggling at all. You're not such a fat bastard anymore. You're not such a fat bastard anymore. You lost six. 6.3 kg. 6.3? <laughs> okay, sorry. What'd you lose? 3.6. 3.6. Uh, wishful thinking. You lost 3.6 kg, but you're still fatter than me. You're not such a fat bastard anymore. And you're still a complete prick. The first climb it actually made me sick. 3.6 kg, it just fell off me. And you're still a prick. But I'm not feeling sick. He's not feeling sick anymore. He's not feeling sick anymore. If being a prick gets you well, I'll be a prick when you go to hell. <laughs> I'm happy that you've lost 3.6 kg. Yes. A little bit of push goes a long way. When you can't do it by yourself, that goes for anything, whether it's losing weight or whatever is in this world. Getting someone to help you, even if they are a prick, sometimes is the answer, bro. Yeah. You know? Because yeah. uh, as much as a prick I am to you, I do it out of love, man. Yeah, man. Yes, bro. <clears throat> you know, fuck. As much as I used to get frustrated and I used to frustrate you and we'd piss each other off and wouldn't believe in the same thing. We both come from the same mother and father. And you stopped trying to kill me, which is quite good. Well, no, you're doing it in a different way now, so that's different. Yeah, I'm trying to kill you in a different way with uh, climbing up hills. So you're going really well, man. And uh, when I see you in six months, I hope that you're going to be going even better. I hope you stick with it without me. I hope you carry on. I hope you can push yourself. You know? Yep. Because it's very easy when I'm not around to fall back into, oh, I'm hungry to eat now. You need to have that time each day where you're in autophagy, where you're not eating. You need to have that time where your body is cleaning out. You need to have that time where your body's burning the fat that you're carrying. And if you start putting carbohydrates and sugar back in your mouth, you just go straight back to that as a fuel source and your body will stop drawing off your fat and you'll put on more than 3.6 kg. You actually put on more weight than you've got now because that's what happens. That program used to be on TV, The Biggest Loser. Yep. They used to do it by just reducing. Yeah, used to watch it. They used to do it by reducing their food. Yep. But the problem with that is that they still snack, right. keeping their insulin levels up all the time. It's insulin that makes you fat. Yeah, yeah. What they should have done was they should have had one big, really healthy, nutritious meal a day. I'm going to get on this side because my stuffed arm can't hold the phone. They should have had one really good meal a day like we've had with you, and then had 24 hours without eating. So the fasting state will clean them out and get their body working how it's optimally supposed to work. We evolved over these last three or four hundred thousand years. Wake up in the morning. In your case, you wake up in the cave with 20 women all around you because you're a stud. And, uh, Can you tell the truth, bro? It's good. Well, you told me that. And you wake up and you go hungry. And you be hungry. 
and you go out with the men folk and leave your 20 women behind in the cave going, oh, when's Tristan coming back? Story of my life, bro. Yeah, story of your life. You can go out there and you would hunt. And you might find food, or you might not. You might go hunting for two days. And in that time, your body had to survive without food, because that's how we've evolved. So, it burnt the fat that you were carrying in your body from the last hunt. And looking at you state of you right now, like looking at the state of you right now, you've done heaps of hunting. So you wake in the morning, you'd be absolutely hungry, you go, I've got to go and hunt. And you go and hunt. You might get an animal, you might not. But your body wouldn't pack up and give up if you didn't catch an animal. We didn't evolve that way. If we'd evolved that way, we would have all died out because when you go hunting, you don't always get a kill. We learnt to burn our fat as a fuel. And we've lost that through too much sugar, too much carbohydrate. And now your body's relearning it again. You've, all your body's machinery is starting to change. You're becoming fat-burning adaptive. And that's what you've come. And that's why yesterday you were sick and today you're not feeling so sick. How's your heart rate working up here? You okay? Out of it. Do you need a break? Cool. Well, we've got an aeroplane to catch soon, so we'll go to the top and come back down, yeah? Yeah. Bring any race to the top? No. No. Not a good I'm idea. good. We're good, okay. Hey, we did it! Check it out. Man, wouldn't mind living just in there somewhere with all that native bush. Beautiful. Beautiful, bro. Picks up here? Sure is. Just uh, getting a permit to hunt them is the problem. Yeah, yeah. Well done, bro. Put it there. My brother. My brother from the same mother. Fatty and Skinny went up the hill to get their hearts a pumping. Fatty fell down and smashed his mound. And Skinny started laughing. Because he's a prick. Because he's a prick. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> Such a prick, bro. Love you, bro. Such a prick. I don't love you. <laughs> <laughs> saw some wild pheasants here. Just down here, bro. Okay. There it goes. Just there, look. Little baby pheasants. Look at right up close. How cool is that? There they go, look. They're just, just real young ones. Wow. In the grass, yeah. Would you ever consider coming back to live here, bro? I don't know, Brian. You ever thought about it? Really? No. I can understand that, mate. Wow, look at that. Nelson and Richmond. My home. Nelson Airport. One of the things I like about coming here is not just looking at the planes, but looking at the vehicles. I've looked at them. There's not enough space inside them. They look kind of cool, but nah. These here, well, nah. People like them because of how they look, but how do they really perform? Has anybody ever owned and driven one of these? Looks like it's kind of fine to look like a Hummer, but doesn't it? It's a Wrangler, bro. Jeep, yep, it's a Jeep. And what about the uh, Toyota? The FJ, Cruiser. Not a lot of room inside them. They look kind of funky, but not very practical. So leaving the bro behind. Woohoo! <laughs> so he's about to get on his airplane, and I want to say to all of you, is it your plane? No. No, something beacon. I want to say to you guys out there with brothers and sisters that have not seen him for a long time, for one reason or another, our lives get busy. We have children, we have jobs, we have stuff that just like gets in the way. Uh, I really appreciated making the time. He said he was going to come two years ago, and then he said a year ago, and it took a major event in both of our lives for us both to get back together. I had to get really crook, almost die, and he had to get separated from his partner. Uh, it's funny, eh, how things bring you together, two bad events bring you together. We've had real quality time. Hey, bro. It's been excellent. It's been really good. Do you mean that? Yeah, absolutely. It's been great. Life changing? Yeah, yeah, it is in some ways. And I was expecting that. Well, your fans are falling off then. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, what I wanted to say was, before we round up this clip, is if you've got a sibling somewhere, or a mother or a father that you just have become sort of separated from, which we had, which is kind of silly, 
don't wait for a crisis to come along to get back together. Good afternoon, this is Sounds Here Welcome to Wellington on flight 334. Nice to board now through gate 1. Don't wait for a uh, crisis or something. Winter would happen in your lives when you connect up. Because we should have, but we didn't. And we missed out on some, some good times. And also, I got to really talk to my brother. To he did. He absolutely did. I didn't really enjoy it, but there's no way around it with you, bro. You've got to be hard ass, otherwise you crumble. And you didn't crumble this time. You, you did it. You faced the cliff the next day, you went back down, and you did lots of other stuff too. It was a cool buzz. It was good. It was good. Yeah, yeah. A bit of a jam, that was cool. We had a jam. We had a jam this morning. So, uh, Fresh finger tap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll leave you with a song uh, from this morning's jam. We'll leave you with that. I'm optimistic my brother's going to stick with the plan and better himself. We'll find out later on this year when I go and see him. Hope you enjoyed the clip. We're going to resume hunting, fishing and normal clay tool story stuff now he's gone. Because the last week I've hardly edited anything because I spent most of my time with him. But it was time well invested. Good luck with your own family and friends. Be good, can't be good. Be careful. See you later. Come with me. Said, Come with me. Woo. 